So this video is gonna be on why retail traders are failing at trading, why 90% of retail traders cannot find any consistent success in their trading, why they blow up their accounts after the first or second year, and just overall why are they not making any money and why are they failing at such a complex topic of trading. Uh, so I've laid out my five main reasons to why I strongly and truly believe that retail traders do fail at trading. If you guys like this video, please drop a thumbs up, please comment, please subscribe. It helps me out more than you guys know. So without further ado, let's get into these reasons and let's break them down. So the first reason is they stop, you have to stop relying on too many indicators on your screens. You know, this picture down here in the bottom right is what majority of traders screens that I see all over Instagram, all over Twitter, uh, what their, their charts look like. You know, they have moving averages, they have RSI, they have MACD. You have to first understand how the market works and what moves the market. Indicators do not move the market. Just because you have, you know, the RSI being oversold or overbought doesn't mean a stock is going to reject or it's going to bounce. You know, just because you have the MACD crossing over the zero line doesn't mean that the stock is going to rally to the upside. You have to understand how the market works, how a balanced market works, how an imbalance works, and what truly moves the market. Second thing is you have to follow price action and, like I said, understand liquidity and illiquid markets because that is what moves the market. So majority of indicators lag because they do not follow price when price moves. So if something is not a derivative of another thing, it's not gonna follow it exactly, and that's what indicators do. They lag, and they do not follow price exactly when price moves. How moving averages are calculated is it waits for the closing period, and then it averages out all those prices, and then you get a moving average based on how many days you're looking to you know, see. Um, the RSI, same thing. It's lags, it waits for that candle to close, it lags price. So it does not move exactly with price. It causes way too much noise on your charts and you're just gonna you know, be looking at something that isn't gonna be making any sense to you guys and it's just too much clutter, it's too much noise on your charts and it's just gonna flood your brain with not necessary material. Um, so I trade with zero indicators on my charts. I know how the market works, I know what moves the market, and I have a simple strategy that I use with zero indicators. Second reason is that traders, you ha they, they do not trade with a plan and they do not have proper risk management. That is a big no. You have to create a rules or a system-based trading style. You need to have a proper entry and exit plan before you enter the trade. You have to trade like a robot. You have to know exactly when you're getting in. You have to know exactly how much money you're putting into the trade. And you have to know exactly when you're going to exit, take profit, or stop out of the trade if it's not working in your favor. It's all planned before the trade is put on. It's systematic. It's all planned. You have to trade like a robot. This makes you think less during a trade and you let itself work out. Why traders fail is because they do not let the trade work out and they are thinking too much and they become vulnerable to natural human cognitive flaws in their own trading. They do not master their trading psychology, so they're vulnerable to natural human cognitive flaws that become apparent with trading based on opinions or emotions. So you need to create a rule or system based trading style and you have to focus on your trading psychology. I cannot stress this enough. Trading psychology is extremely, extremely important. You have to master your mind before you master the markets. Once, your mind, once you master your mind, your success in trading will come. The biggest obstacle to trading success is your own fear, your own greed, your own ego, and your own opinions. You cannot trade with fear. You cannot, you know, have a tight stop loss because you're fearful that the trade's going to go against you and you're going to lose three hundred dollars. You can't have greed. You can't have a, a green trade, a winning trade, go against you because you're greedy and you want to get more profits. You see the stock climbing up and you're getting greedy and greedy and greedy because it keeps going up, and then all of a sudden something happens and the stock tanks and you lost a decent amount of profit because you're greed. Then becomes ego. If you have you know nine winning trades in a row, your ego might step in and think you're you know invincible, and that's not how to trade. You have to trade like a robot, and you cannot trade based off opinions and other human you know flaws that have just become natural with every human. 
It's 90% mental, this game. It really is. And the other 10% is just knowing how to trade, you know, knowing what moves the market, knowing how to trade, having a good system. The other 90% the other is just what's going on in your head and the mental aspect that not a lot of traders focus on. And that is, you know, really the important, the most important uh, reason why these traders are failing is because their mental game is not sharp enough. It's more than just buying and selling in the stock market or buying and selling a stock. It's a vehicle for self-mastery and development. You have to master yourself first. You have to master your mind and you have to have discipline and develop your trading and your results and the process will follow. You have to treat it like it's a job. Like I said, it's a, it's a vehicle for self-mastery and development. The discipline you have in your daily life will reflect in your trading abilities. You know, it depends on your personality and the things you do on a daily basis. Are you disciplined? Um, you know, how are your emotions throughout the day? Are you having a bad day, a rough day? Now, this might sound stupid, but it's going to affect your trading abilities. It's going to affect your thought process. It's going to affect your trading in a way subconsciously that you're not even going to realize. Um, so you have to wake up early, prepare, create a plan. You have to treat it like it's a job. It's a full-time job. I'm sure the majority of people watching this video want trading to be a full-time job for them. Um, so you have to treat it like one. You have to wake up early, prepare, create a plan. And then when the market's closed, you also have work you have to do too. You have to journal your trades, you know, see what works, why it worked, write down your thought process, your emotions, and then you could build off that. You can work on it. You'll know your weaknesses. You'll know your strengths. You're going to develop confidence. You're going to just become self-aware of your thought process, your emotions, and then you're going to understand to you know change what's working, what's not working, and then you're going to deal with stress, and then everything is going to start to tie in together, and then all of a sudden you're going to just find consistency in your trading. But it all starts in your mind. And the fifth and final reason that I believe retail traders do struggle um, is because we're set up to fail you know retail traders are providing liquidity for these institutions to trade the big banks the big hedge funds you know insurance companies the big institutional traders that have the tools that retail traders do not they're trading with such a large size that it would put retail out of the water you know we're different than institutional traders retail traders are just set up to fail so let me ask you guys this how many times have you thought of doing the opposite so let's say you lost on a trade, right? You kept losing on a certain style or a certain uh, system that you came up with. How many times have you told yourself, the next time that I think to do this, I'm just gonna do the opposite of what I was originally thinking. So if I thought I was gonna buy here, instead of me buying here, I'm gonna short here. Or instead of me selling here, I'm gonna buy here because obviously it's not working out for me. Let me just do the opposite because there's only two ways it could work. I'm either gonna win or lose. Um, so that's happened you know, to a lot of retail traders that I've talked with. So you have to think and trade like an institution. Institutions win 98% of the time. You have to start thinking and trading like one. They need us retail traders to buy and sell from. We provide them liquidity. You have to stop buying breakouts and stop shorting breakdowns. You know, If they, you see the market shooting up, stop buying that shoot up. Or if you see the market tanking and break it down, don't short that breakdown. You know, we're providing liquidity for these institutions. When we're buying, someone else has to be selling because who could we buy from? And if we're selling, someone else has to be buying because who else is going to buy what we're selling? For every buyer, there's a seller. And for every seller, there's going to be a buyer. Um, so retail traders in this game are just a fish. Think of us, you know, swimming in the water. We're just a fish. These institutions, the big money, the smart money, they are the fishermen. And they're casting their poles, they're casting their bait in the water, and that bait in that water is the, is the uh, institutional orders. You know, us fish, we're hungry. We want to eat, we want to make money. What are we going to make money off of? What are we trying to eat? We're eating the institutional orders, which is the bait. And those are put out there by the fishermen. So it's just a big cycle. Institutions... When they do lose, they don't lose as often. They control majority of the money in the stock market and they need us to buy from, they need us to sell from. So if you think and act like a institution, uh, I really think that you're going to be set up for the long term of trading, you know? Um, this is how I trade. I think and act like an institution. 
Um, I trade with them. I don't trade in the noise. I trade when institutions are trading. I trade with their unfilled orders. I'm on the same side as institutions. I'm not on the side with retail traders. When retail traders are selling, I'm buying. When retail traders are buying, I'm selling. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like, comment, and please subscribe if you learned anything from this video.